NFL Stock Exchange Podcast. I'm Trevor Sikma. That's Connor Rogers. Buddy, I'm sorry that the Lightning won in six. Uh, I don't I don't I don't know what to tell you. God, if that really was what happened. This series is no, over. Uh, I'm not coming okay. back for Thursday's show. <laughs> Okay, if you guys listened to the podcast last Thursday, you know that we are pre-recording this Monday's episode. So if you were, if the series is over one way or another, Rangers or Lightning, you're not going to get the reaction that you want right here on this podcast episode because we got to pre-record this one early. It is a Monday mailbag episode. The entire episode is going to be dedicated to answering your football and non-football questions. Connor, this is our first fully fledged episode for the good people. I'm very, very excited about it. We got so many questions right off the bat, and we picked a lot of good ones here for, I, for this podcast. I cannot wait. This is going to be an hour of pure laughter and just hilarious nonsense, honestly, and not a lot of and a lot of good stuff too. We tried to mix it up. We got some people really wanted um, football questions answered, and then yeah. some, you know, some people wanted to have a little more fun with it. So we're going to serve uh, all parties, but my goodness, I think this will be our most ridiculous episode ever. So it's far. a creative way to talk about football though. Like a couple of the yeah, questions right. are yeah. like, yeah, they're football based, but the, the, you guys out there, you do such a great job of putting them in a creative and fun way that we're going to try to do this as much as we can. Now, I don't know. I don't know how much we're going to be able to devote like full episodes to it. Maybe we'll make sure. it a regular Monday thing during the summer, but we definitely want to get the mailbag things involved. And I think that you guys are going to agree after this episode, because it's going to be a lot of fun before we get to it. It's time for everybody's favorite ad read sweaty sack summer is approaching and it is time to prioritize the comfort in your crotch. That is why the Kings of crotch comfort manscape has spent the last two years designing the most comfortable boxers out there. These are the softest fabric underwear that you're ever going to find. So breathable. It's just like gills for your groin. Even they, they even trademarked the phrase jewel pouch. So you guys know that it's serious. I think it's time that you invest in your family jewels. So let the bulge breathe a little bit. I held it that time. You did. You did. I held you did it. Good. You did good. Get 20, 20% off and free shipping. Use the promo code PFF at manscaped.com. Dad, you can buy it for yourself. Sons, you can buy it for you, your dad, wh- wh- whoever you want to buy it for. Ladies, you can buy it for your man. Dog, dads, y'all deserve a lot of love too. Get 20% off and the free shipping using PFF or at manscaped.com. 20% off free shipping. Promo code PFF, manscaped.com. Once the boxer 2.0 touches your sack. You'll never go back. The dramatic pause, it gets longer every single episode that we do that and every single time that I have to uh, make the ad read. You did good. You held up well there, Connor. I was nervous you were throwing me an alley-oop on the the once you... No, uh, no, you just know. the dramatic pause. And I was pause. like, do I yam it home or do I let him finish? <laughs> that was my Dwayne Wade. The hands were out yeah, and I was ready I was like, for is you it to me? LeBron just flush it in. Yeah, of the Manscaped ad. Unbelievable. But um, A dual oh Manscaped God. ad. I don't know if people are ready for that one, actually. No, they're not. Well... We'll make them wait. But what we won't make them wait for is the... <laughs> what are you opening up with? I'm very curious what you're opening up with. I here. think we got to go... Okay, look. we got. I think we got to start with Jake's question. Because this is the very first one that you sent to me. And it is in thread form. This question is unbelievable. And yeah, remarkable. Remarkable. I, I, Jake, just hat is off to you for coming up with this question. I feel like we had to lead off with it because it was incredible. I'll read this one. If you guys are listening and you're not sitting down, you might want to sit down because you got to follow along. And this one gets very interesting. Okay. I'm painting a picture here for you for this question. You're walking down a street in a small rural town in East Montana. Okay. You start craving some ice cream and you head into a local ice cream shop, but the shop is empty. Confused, you walk back out on the street. And for a brief moment that you were in the shop, you realize that the streets are now completely deserted frantically you bolt into various different shops around nobody can be found there's not a soul to be found now nighttime you head back outside again okay because you're it was it was dusk and you've been trying to find somebody you can't find somebody now it is nighttime you head back out to the streets again all the lights in a town all of a sudden go out it's pitch black when you look up, you don't see any stars either, so you start getting freaked out. Then various green lights start to flash across the sky. Are you following me, Connor? Because I got goosebumps already. I'm with you all the way here. I read this one multiple times. I have you to admit. You hear a voice. The voice from the sky says, Hello, friend. I've been <laughs> looking for you. Come join me up here. There are dozens of footsteps you hear behind you now, and you're scared to look. Here's the question. 
To your right is a stable of horses. To your left is a building with a built-in maze that nobody has ever solved before. A half a mile ahead of you is the entrance to a catacomb rumored to be haunted. And a quarter mile behind you is your car. What is your next move? For me, I'm going to get on a horse and ride to my car. <laughs> and then get in my car. I think that's also my, my... That's my gut reaction, right? Get in the horse, get to your car, get yeah. the hell out of there. But what if the horses are like freaked out by whatever is behind you there's a lot of bad variables here you know One, like what if they start freaking yeah. like, like what if there's like i don't know like zombies aliens i don't know what the hell jake is putting on us well you don't know what's behind you which makes our plan pretty tough horses get scared pretty easily they do indeed. so if there's any weird that's noises why eric Barry, that's why eric Barry didn't mess with them eric Barry, not yeah. a fan of horses there i tied football into the question for everybody. good everybody's Maybe happy do that oh man I think I'm going I, for the horses. I think I'm, I'm going for the horse no matter what. Even if there's problems behind me, then I just ride forwards. I'm not going. I'm not going to the maze because nobody's solved this before. So it's now nah, it's tough. I don't Can't know. Do that. It, it, Can't do that. Jake didn't give me what the what awaits at the end of the maze. If the very very small chance you're the first person to solve it, right? But I mean, look, understandably, okay, if you've got confidence that you are able to solve it, I don't. Well, I was gonna say, like, would you would you even risk it? I don't think I'd. I don't think I would risk it. Also, what's the point of telling us that there's a haunted catacomb in front of us? What we- he, he wanted to see our like how dangerous we're feeling. But what's in the ca- no? It. I mean, it's haunted. And who's speaking to you? I don't in the know. Sky? I don't know. Speaking I, of, you got to seen- evac. So hold on. Have you seen have you seen have you been to the movies lately and seen the trailer for this nope movie? No. It kind of paints this exact picture. Like okay. It, it, there's, this there's inspired. A, I think it's a Jordan Peele movie. Oh, I think I saw the trailer on um like a streaming service. And like everybody's just like looking up to the sky terrified. Yes. And like the, I like did you, see this. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. This is giving me that feel. I genuinely have goosebumps right now. I don't watch. I don't know if you watch horror movies or like scary movies or things like that. I don't. I can't. So I I never did. Putting myself in this situation is freaking me the F out. Yeah, no, I'm not a big horror movie guy either. I think the the furthest I go is Stranger Things. Okay, so that's basically where I'm at. (laughs) Yeah, which is incredible. Like absolutely incredible. But that's about as far as I go. I haven't started it yet i haven't started season four yet i I won't give any spoilers but just obviously that's about as far as i go incredible this is yeah this is not we're not adventurous in this situation i'm i'm going for the horse i'm getting i'm i I think i think the horse because of the footsteps behind you i think the horse is basically your only way out the horse is your your fail proof plan if there is one because even if you can't get back to your car you can ride forward the maze is the maze is a, a trick. Nah, I can't do it. Obviously, the catacombs is like yeah, not, not the dumb not guy mistaken. horror move. Right, that dies yeah, yeah, first. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. A really good uh, situation presented by Jake, and I was, I'm not surprised we had the same. What a it's hell insane. of a question to start us off here. Daniel asked yeah. this next one, a little bit more football centric. Would you rather fight 100 duck sized Jordan Davises or one Jordan Davis sized duck? This is a classic from Locked On NFL Drafts Fan Fridays where everybody would always give us, would you rather fight this many ducks or this many, like whatever size ducks or whatever it is. And Ben and I always came to the conclusion that you're probably always picking the higher amount, smaller object. That feels like what you're going. Because like, really, if I had, could hold up? Are you about to tell me that you're gonna fight one Jordan Davis sized duck? Absolutely. What? How are you? How are you gonna attack this thing? I, at least I can try to tire it out. One hundred Jordan Davises the size of ducks. I, I would have my limbs ripped off in twenty two seconds. A hundred's a lot. A hundred's a lot. Think about how strong they are. How compact we, we'll, they we'll, are. We'll talk about a, we'll talk about like a 380 pound duck out here. 
Yeah, but at least you can kind of move around it a little bit because it is a duck still. Ducks are, are not very cow- nimble. Are we in an octagon? What What's the situation here? Like, is the space limited? Or can we just run? We're, for fun, we will we will say we're in the octagon because right, it is a in, fight. We're in Daniel the octagon. did say it's a fight. It's it's Las Vegas, not an escape. okay? It's the, a fight. The, the lightweight title of the world's on the line, and we can't get out of it. A hundred's a lot. Did you see the video of the orangutan? Yes, of course. I couldn't miss it. The moron <laughs> getting close to the orangutan cage and then getting his shirt ripped off. What was his plan before it grabbed him? The thing is that, like, listen, people are so stupid yeah, when it comes very to animals. Dumb. Stupid. They think they're cartoon characters. Right. They do. They 100%. Yeah. They think that animals are cartoon characters. That is a great way to put it. And, like, whether it's, whether it's yeah. like, marine life or things at the zoo or whatever like don't be an idiot i can't tell yep. you how many i can't tell you how many videos i see of people who are like oh let me put my hand close to an alligator and then all of a sudden i don't have a hand anymore okay that's on you my guy yep I don't feel bad for you i don't feel bad for the people at the zoo you're just an idiot if you end up doing something like that I, yeah. all right, i'm going i'm going 100 i'm going 100 you really are yeah, I'm going 100. What's your What's your plan here? Are you just, just kicking and punching? Yeah, I'm just gonna like kick the crap out of him. 100 duck size. How big are we talking? Like Jordan how big Davis's. Is a duck here? How big is a duck here? Ducks are a hundred of them's a lot, let's look, and they let's are look. Jordan Davis's. All right, so they're strong right. and fast. Measurables of a duck. What's the mock draftable of a duck? What are they like? A, they're like 20 by 12 ducks. Let's see. Okay, so the very the second link that I have, I literally put in measurables of a duck, and the second link that I have here in Google is Ducks QB one Justin Herbert measured in at six foot six, two hundred and twenty seven pounds. The sports world drives the world. <laughs> it really does. All right, so a mallard duck is about twenty to twenty six inches. I'm assuming that means in height, and they weigh about three and a half pounds. All right. Yeah, the no, way, okay. Hundred. Hundred. I now I get what you mean. I'm still fighting the one Jordan Davis. You're an animal. You're an animal. Size duck. It's a look, big ass duck. If, look, if you get out of the octagon with the belt in that regard, you will have earned it, my friend. My thought is like, if I can poke out its eyes, I have a chance. Oh, here we go. Where a hundred ducks, I just know I'm gonna get slowly ripped apart. Which is, I did a hundred duck size Jordan Davises would just dismantle me i think i have a chance i think i have a chance no i don't think i have a chance i think i have no you don't you absolutely (laughs) absolutely (laughs) let me me rephrase that i am not gonna be the guy i love that people think this that thinks they could beat a gigantic animal i want to make sure we're uh i don't stand a chance but i think there's at least a plan i don't have a plan for this is a good ratio i gotta say some of these questions are very like some of them are like oh would you like 12 or one it's like okay i'd rather do 12 100 you're you're bringing stamina into it it's a lot you got to train for this bad boy you got to keep the cardio and the heart rate up for the three months leading up to the fight you got a lot to think about here there's no doubt about it what's Uh, your thoughts on people that that feed uh birds like random pigeons no Stop. Yeah, I know. We just it got Stop. so bad in Hoboken that they this town had to ban it. It's illegal because people feed the birds, and now we just have these gigantic pigeons everywhere, no. just shitting all over the place. No, no. Like unless you are, I mean, unless you are like consistently no unless. giving them like actual bird feed every that's day. That's a problem too. Yeah, that's but then, a whole other like, problem. But like even that is like bad. Like you like you you are Not messing good. you are messing with how they get their food. You are messing with how that animal lives its life the way that they should. So yes, you are you don't don't feed don't be dumb. Don't that's that's the big takeaway here from the earlier part of the podcast. Just don't be dumb with animals. Uh, I I have I have a moral conflict with this cuz there's an old lady in my neighborhood like old old and I think all she does is smoke cigarettes and feeds the pigeons. But she does it in Both my neighborhood. Are bad. I don't know how to tell her, like, and I haven't. This I've lived here for a pretty long time, too, and I still haven't grown up the courage to ask her to stop. Because I think it's all she looks forward to is smoking cigarettes and feeding pigeons. <laughs> These are bad things, Connor. These and I walk by every things. day, and I, I, like, snarl at her. But I'm like, <laughs> I just... Do- because I hate pigeons so much, so much. And they sit on my skylights all the time and just shit all day. <laughs> <laughs> but 
but I can't. New York living. It's yeah. New York living. Yeah, dude. All right. Keep it um, moving. The Dynasty Grill asks this next one. What's on you guys' bucket list? What hmm. is something that you've always wanted to do, but you haven't yet? I have one that I haven't completed yet. Okay. Um, I, I do plan on going to every single state. Ooh, nice. How, I've do been you know to, how many you're at? Yeah, I've been to 60% of the country, I think, last time I looked. Let's I got, see. I gotta, be close, I gotta be close to 35. It's funny because if you're watching, you could see this. It's like literally one part of the country that I haven't oh, been Oh, yeah. To. You know what I mean? Like the whole Dakotas, Montana, Wyoming situation. Is, that, is it just an app? Yeah, it's called Ben, B E N. That would that's one that I think I I'm I'm pretty damn close to cuz I'll knock out a ton of those in one stretch. Okay. That's um, cool. That's awesome. And then I'll start working on the rest of the world. That yeah, that's a clear-cut one for me. I don't I don't really have something that like I haven't done that I always think about wanting to do. Like I haven't been skydiving, but I don't like I'm not one of those people that like, "Oh my god, I need to go do it." Yeah, like I have the I I I wrote a couple down and like I have the stereotypical the three stereotypical ones that I have that I would really love to do someday. Go skydiving is one of them. I think that that would be a really cool feeling that you can't really capture anywhere yep. else. I've only been scuba diving once in my life. And okay. it was in the Florida Keys. And it was one of the most fun, incredible times of my life. That's a but cool one. I would love to go to Australia and scuba dive or just like swim around the Great Barrier Reef. With you on that. Awesome. See the pyramids is another one just because it's just yep. like fucking wild, right? But those are the yep. stereotypical three. Uh, I have get married on my list, which hopefully is a bucket list that I get to do in, you know, a year, two years time. Yeah, the countdown should be on for that one. And then I have two that are out of left field. Okay. Me, Guy Fieri. What would you say to him? You are God. You know, I don't, I don't know. Like I've watched brother. I've watched when people ask like, Hey, what is your comfort TV? Wait, show? really? It's triple D, D. D. Really? It's triple D. Yes. I will just like, if I am bored and triple D is on, I'm just going to, I'm going to throw it on, man. I love cooking. I love people like being happy over food. I love like good point. learning, like how you prepare all kinds of stuff. And Guy Fieri is just like an absolute legend. So I'd be like, that's a funny one. That's, that's funny. And then the other funny one, which is maybe actually serious beyond the price is right. I think we can, I think we can get you on there. You, you want to you want to be on the show? I yes, I want to oh, be on the show. But I've got to like right. I've got to get past it. Now I'm out of my prime right now. When I was in college, I had a a class schedule one semester where Tuesdays and Thursdays I didn't have class from like 9 a.m. to like 11 a.m. So I would go back to my dorm and Price Right was on every day. So <laughs> I was amazing. like, I was a damn shark by the end of that semester. Like I was yelling at people on the TV, like, you're an idiot. Yeah, how could you? Like, how could you do this? So uh, I think if I get back into shape, if I get back into Let's Price see. Right shape, we can make it happen. So yeah. I think, I really think we can make this happen. This is good PR for the Price is Right. Do they have a, they have a Twitter account? Okay. I've never uh, even, I've never even like tried to get on yet though so it's i i don't know if i don't think i'm ready yet or what but i feel like that's a bucket list item so if it'd be hilarious if i really campaign to get you on this and we get you on and say they give you like three guest tickets do i get to go yeah 100 percent. okay yeah, yeah. well i, I mean, mean like, obviously Alyssa's number Alyssa, one right right Alyssa, Alyssa gets has me. to go but if you yeah if you if you continue the campaign and you get me on this show then uh, i'm gonna work on this i think okay. we can get you on the prices right we might have enough uh we might have enough connections we have here. enough yeah yeah we might be able to pull this off do that's a good a, one do you have a specific sports one because i have i have a specific sports one mm. for a bucket list yes i do um, I really want to see, and I've had oppor not opportunities, but there's been plenty of years that this happens. I just haven't taken the initiative to do it because I usually am working. I'd really like to see the Jets play at Lambeau Field. I know that's like kind of a random one, but I've never been to Lambeau. Yeah. Um, I've been to a lot, a lot of college stadiums for work. I've not been to a lot of NFL stadiums mm. and like Lambeau is the one that like, I know the day before you could do the tour. There's a lot of different things you could do there. So one year when I can, I will go see the Jets play at Lambeau Field. That's my main sports one. I would like to get to every baseball stadium, but it's just, it's really tough. Um, There's a lot of baseball stadiums. There's a lot of baseball stadiums, and like, I've been to a lot of cities around the U.S., and I don't really like, it's not that nothing against them, it's just like there's no reason to go again besides that. So like to do it for oh, one right. thing. Yeah, that, yeah. That's my closest thing to a sports one. What about you? 
Well, okay, I have two. One, go to the Masters. I want to go that's to the That's a good one. That's, yeah, that's, that's a good that's one. That's one that I have. Oh, two. World Cup. I would die to go to the World Cup. Oh, yeah. I well, would uh, die dude, to go to the World Cup. They're here next. You know that? Yes. In four I'm years, already, they're, they're in yeah, America. Yeah, I'm already thinking about it. No, okay. We're going we're, we're we'll to make we'll that, that one happen because I agree we'll with you. We'll, we'll do that. But the other one that I have, uh, do a broadcast of a preseason game for the Bucks. That would be... Agreed. That I would th- be it's funny you said that. I think about this a lot. I'd love to do that, man. That is a that is a true career and yes. sports bucket list of mine is to one day do color commentary for a preseason broadcast of my hometown team. Okay, one I love that, and I I'm stealing it. I agree. I would love to call a preseason game for the Jets or or even the Giants here in my backyard. Either one. Obviously, the Jets would mean a little more. Um, you know, it's funny you said that. This was a really good point made to me um, by Adam Lefko, who I work at the Bleacher Report. One year he said to me, this is years ago, but it always stuck with me. He goes, his theory on preseason was that at least for like the first and last game, he's like, they should use more draft people to color commentate the games because the reality is the traditional broadcasters, and it's not their fault, don't know the guys in the game in the second half. Right, right. And I And when he, and I'm like, that is so spot on and i wonder if we get there or even if your team have an alternate broadcast right or make it the third guy like you still have your color guy you still have your play-by-play guy but you bring in a draft guy and when you think about it there's so many draft guys that are also connected to a team in some way because we all grew up football fans right like you with the bucks me with the jets like you think there's there's millions of guys like that every guy i I think even daniel jeremiah does stuff for the chargers or did like it's well like mina does stuff for the rams the rams yes right perfect example right Right. I think teams will eventually really they'll realize there's a lot of value in preseason broadcast. I'd love to in man. a different way. That's I'd a great to, one. Man. I think that, one. that would be a, that would be a lot of fun. Uh, Johnny, Johnny came up with this next one. Johnny text three football question said it's often they say that only five teams a season are truly in contention for the Super Bowl. Who are the five teams this year? <sighs> I bet we have the same. Yeah, I don't this. I don't, I don't know if there's a lot of creativity in this. I one. bet we have the same three. I mean, I'll, I'll kick right out of the gate the Bills and Bucks. Those are two that we have that are the same. The Chiefs. Those. That's the third one that I thought that we would have that is the same. You kind of, by law, as much as I am picking against them this year, have to include the Rams. I don't have the Rams. Okay, so I I agree. If you're going by law of like they won the Super Bowl last year. Uh, the Rams would not be in my top five most likely. Mm-hmm. Bills, Bucks, Chiefs. I would. This is so reckless, but I'd put the Chargers in there. I also have the Chargers. Yeah, I'm. A, I feel like that's. I, I wild. also have the Chargers. And then Green Bay. I also have the Packers. That's it. And if you're a Rams fan, I'm sorry. It's like no disrespect. I'm often really not a believer in. I think football. It's almost. I know teams have done it, obviously. But repeating in football, mm-hmm. it's just it's, it's extremely so hard. difficult it's to so do. Hard. It's extremely difficult to do. I think it's the Rams so are I think in that next group of teams, you'd put the Bengals, the Ravens, the Rams, yep. uh, the Broncos. Yep. I think that's it. I, I don't I don't really think the Cowboys are contenders. So I wouldn't really put them in there. Yeah. They would have to make a big jump in like internal I, I, areas. I, I, they I didn't make think... enough external moves. I don't think the 49ers are going to be there. I don't, I don't think have, so either. I don't have faith in the Cardinals. No, I actually think they're a regression um, team this year. No. Yeah, that's it. Interesting. That's about it. Are we forgetting some? No, the Chiefs. We already had the Chiefs. I was trying to think of the fourth team, but it was the Raiders. You know what's the most interesting team. one? And it's literally impossible to talk about, and I'm not going to recommend that we even do? The Browns. Oh, right. Well, it's impossible. It's, impo- it's impossible. It's impossible. It's impossible. But I would not include them in the top 10 at all. Yeah, I wouldn't either. Johnny also <laughs> asked a non-football question. You get to play as one superhero in Warzone, full powers and everything. Who do you pick? So he's talking about like Call of Duty that's Warzone? What, that's what I was wondering. So you get to be, you're playing Warzone, but you're a superhero. That's actually a really fascinating question. I mean, the, the Hulk, right? I mean, you, the Hulk can't die. Like that's bullets, a good point because he bullets just don't, bullets. Bullets, yeah. don't do any, bullets don't do anything to him and it'd be a fun way to kill people in war zone you just grab them and you just like literally like throw them hundreds of Which miles is, away you know yeah meleeing people in war so zone I feel like nothing's that's, funnier I, dude, I feel like that would be my answer yeah i think that's the one i or think or win a soldier just to be cheeky and have the same even playing field but just be better than everybody 
Oh man, it's true. I think there's a lot of fun if you're being Batman, if you get all of his stuff. Ooh, Batman. Like, do you get the Batmobile? That's kind of a game changer in Warzone. Yeah, I would roll with Batman. I get your point about the Hulk. Um, If the game is finishing and like, I know the maps change, but when I did play like at hospital and you're Spider-Man and you can just shoot around everyone. You're you're talking old map. You're talking old map. No, I didn't make the, I didn't make the move when they changed the map. I just play Rebirth now for everybody out there. That's what I was doing when I, before I stopped. Yeah. There you go. I think the Rebirth actually. So much better. A good time. That's yeah. It's a way better time. Okay. Uh, what is your most controversial holiday take? I don't like Thanksgiving. And I know this is like, okay, let me rephrase that. I don't think Thanksgiving is like, everybody gets so fired up for Thanksgiving. And I think I've, I've said this on a pod before. I, Thanksgiving is, everybody's like, oh, you just eat and drink and watch football. And it's <laughs> awesome. And I'm just like, yeah, it's not that. Usually the football sucks, honestly. Just being on, and it's still football. Bad football is better than no football. Um, the football usually is like not very good. Thanksgiving food's obviously good. It's not the best tier of food mm, for the most true. part. It's true. You're eating better at Christmas, or at least you should be. Yeah, it's a lot of work. Um, not that I'm like the top chef of my family that makes all the food, but oh it's, it's, wow. See, I don't make I don't make shit. I don't really do much either, but just my a lot mom of the and chores. my aunts and uncles are uh, they they handle a lot of the food. Yeah, so you're right. I can't even complain about that. I don't do enough to complain about that. I just don't. I don't know. It's all right. The fall is the best season. That helps Thanksgiving fall is the a best lot. season for sure. And no, it, like that's a that's a controversial take that you that you don't like Thanksgiving. That's controversial. I don't, I don't know if I dislike it. I just think it's very low on the holiday power rankings. Look, it's not I, a top uh, five holiday probably. I don't really, I don't, I, the way, okay, I'll just say it like this. The way that we celebrate the 4th of July, I, I just, I'm not into. I don't. What do I, you traditionally do for 4th of July? I mean, I do, I, so like traditionally I'll either like go to, go to a pool or like go out on the water or like mm-hmm. something like that. Like when I lived in Florida, we would go boating and don't get me wrong, like boating or like a pool day, like that stuff is awesome. But unfortunately the holiday is built around like people drinking a lot and then operating a motor vehicle on the water. And like, that's not really good. And it's, that's bad. Unfortunately, like encouraged by a lot of people to do those things, which is really dangerous. And two, like, I don't care about fireworks. I really do. I really don't. I wasn't like that person who was like super into it growing up. And and instead it just is like hell on earth for a lot of dogs and like PTSD for some people. And it's just like, I don't know, man, I don't. I don't mean to seem like un-American out here. Like I like I don't like uh, like I don't like the chance to celebrate. Just the way that we celebrate for the July. I don't think it's a bad take. I am a big fan holiday. of the Fourth of July, but I am not a fan of. I don't like fireworks. I like all, having a good time. Like I, my ideal Fourth of July day is either like at the beach or at the boat or like really like on a pool, like yeah. some, some some pool where you're just like with a ton of people and you're hanging out and you're playing cornhole or beer pong or whatever and you're just having a good time. But like yes. you're at a pool, you know, when you start throwing again like motor vehicles into it, um, people start to make some bad decisions. And I've I've heard of too many bad decisions coming from Florida, so it's just. It's not my favorite holiday for those reasons. Going out for Fourth of July is a disaster. I've oh, learned. could never. Oh, could it's never. a disaster. Oh, dude, yeah. we're we're ordering pizza at at, at yeah. seven p.m. and we're in. Yeah, we got to be in somewhere. I mean, obviously, I spent a lot. What of do you time think down about? What do you think about New Year's? Now that we're on this topic, man, I've gone really back and forth on New Year's. I used to. You live in New York, though. Yeah, but I'm not. I'm not here for new year's a lot as much as you would think oh yeah okay. the last couple of new years well the last couple because the pandemic so it's not really yeah, real yeah, new yeah. year's i've been around but before that i had a stretch of new year's where one year i was in costa rica another year i was in la for work uh another year i was in san antonio for work so and i always found new year's to, it, like when you're not home to be so much fun like it's just like it's just people out having a good time but when I lived in this, like, way back growing up, like, when I wasn't near the city, New Year's was, like, didn't mean anything. Hmm. Like, there was, like, if somebody didn't have a party, it, like, people had a party, right. but then, right. like, you're posted up for, for the night. New Year's here, or in a big city in general or somewhere, is a freaking blast. Okay. 
I need to do it. I need to do a, a big like you because I think it's a little overrated. I think you New know, it can, it can be really. I've like, had some great yeah. times on New Year's, but I do genuinely think that it's uh, that it's a little overrated. Okay. All right. This is an interesting one. I hope you're ready for it. Strap in because I prepared for this one. Nick asked this. Benjamin Solak, so my old co-host, versus Connor Rogers, my current co-host, in a steel cage match with Tampa Bay Trey as the special guest. Walk us through that match. Are you ready for it? Please. I, got this, I, got I love the, this. I got the script for you, okay? <laughs> Am I, who's the heel? Oh, you're about to find out. Okay. You're about to find out. All right? I hope it's me. Ben starts off the match, obviously, just trying to get away. Like, you're stronger than Ben. You're bigger than Ben. Ben's just, like, trying to get away. He's trying to, like, be cheeky with you. You know, like, you know, like go off the ropes yeah. and, like, try like to, a like, manager. S- like, slide under your legs or something. He's trying to get a little cheeky, but he realizes that's not working, okay? Connor expectedly dominates the early parts of the match, gets a few shots in there, gets a little arm bar on him. He gets out of it. When Connor's not looking... <laughs> Ben so gives sense. him a low blow kick to the groin. Okay. That's and like I'm distracted. Connor's distracted. Something happens. And Ben just gives Connor a low, a low blow kick to the groin. All right. Then Ben realizes he has the chance to escape, get out of the cage, and then get out, win the match. So Ben climbs up the cage to escape. Connor gets up, follows him, catches up to him. And now they're fighting on top of the cage. And he and Connor goes up to Ben to Undertaker choke slam him through the cage back onto the ring. But I don't want to see that happen because then Ben's gonna die. <laughs> so I rattle the cage and you just fall through the floor of the cage. Ben's still up there and you fall through on the top of the cage, which I didn't mean to happen, but it happens. Okay. So then you fall through and you're laying on the you're you're laying on the canvas. And then Ben sees an opportunity to get the upper hand in the match. So then from the top of the cage, Ben five-star frog splashes straight onto you. Okay. Do I feel anything when he does that? Or does he just bounce off me? You do, but you're both hurt. You're you're hurt from the fall. Ben's hurt because he didn't train his ribs well enough to uh, (laughs) to do a five-star frog splash from that uh, from that point. So both are hurt. But Connor gets up first. Now he's obviously super pissed off, so he's about to just go straight up at Ben and, you know, no beating around the push, um, pin him, hurt him, get the belt. But from the roof, jumps down at Ben's new co-worker and our old co-worker, Austin stop Gale, it, okay, to come in. He RKO's Connor out of nowhere. I can't stand – I can't have this as a special guest director. Yeah, what are you doing? You're the so ref. Then, so then I give Austin the sweet chin music when he gets up. So Austin's knocked out cold. By this time, Ben gets up. Connor's on the floor from getting RKO'd by Austin. Ben tries to climb up to the third rope to again give Connor a five-star frog splash. But by the time he did, because it took him so long, he goes for it. But Connor rolls out of the way. Ben misses. Connor covers him. Connor wins the cage match. Unbelievable script, number one. Like, you should be writing Raw, Monday Night Raw, right now. (laughs) I, I... I thought at some point, like, you were just going to throw my lifeless body over Ben's lifeless body as the oh, special guest I referee. And, I could have. And quick count it. The uh, the Austin interruption I was not ready for. I thought Bill Simmons was going to come out of the tunnel at some <laughs> point. And just try to, whatever way he can, give the ringer better publicity by Ben pulling off the upset. Unbelievable. Ooh. Unbelievable match. So there you one. go. There you go. That's a great pay-per-view. I'd yeah. pay $70 for that. All right, before we keep going on these questions, we'll go a little bit faster paced on these uh, next few as we kind of um, finish out the last, whatever, 20, 30 minutes of the show. Got to remind you that the NFL Stock Exchange podcast is brought to you by Cash App. Cash App is the easiest way to send, spend, or save your money. You can send or request money from your friends whenever they owe you for drinks, dinner, literally anything. Besides just sending money back and forth, Cash App allows you to invest in stocks with as little as $1 as well as buy, sell, and send Bitcoin instantly. Cash App also lets you design your own debit card completely free uh, anywhere that you have it. Cash App will laser will laser print and mail you your card all for free and the card comes with free discounts at your favorite places called boosts sign up for cash app today use the referral code touchdown it's all caps touchdown which gives new users 15 free bucks it's promo code touchdown for 15 free dollars over at cash app this next question is from kellen green says rank these four things 
from most important to the success of an NFL franchise to the least important owner, GM, head coach, quarterback. Hmm. Tricky. It, it's, it's kind of it is. because my thought is a quarter, a great quarterback can overcome the other three. Pretty much everything. Yeah. But I don't think you find a great quarterback and support him without, without the other three. The other three. Right. So I would right. not, this might shock people because a lot of people, their instant answer is quarterback. But I'm treating this like I have an NFL franchise with a blank slate. Like I don't have any of the things. I'm just putting it all together. Mm -hmm. So I would argue, man, I would argue the head coach is the most important because I think the right head coach can draft the quarterback. This is tough. It's really because tough. a bad owner. Well, Snyder, I think you got to. I think you got to ruin the, the You've got to kind of divide it up. Are we talking like long term sustained franchise success, or, or do you getting just, off the ground, or do you want to win a Super Bowl? Like, what do you want to do? Because I oh, think you want to win a Super Bowl. It's quarterback. It's quarterback, right? Yeah. But like, obviously, sustained success. I think the best owners in football go a long way. I'd still probably. Mm, because, you know, I looked at it this way. I, I think that the GM has their hands in a lot of things, right? The yep. contracts, the the free agents, the draft, who they hire as head coaches Hiring and assistant coaches, staff. right? So much of that goes into it. And so, like, I, I immediately go, well, if you, if you got a great GM, you got everything I, else. That does so many things for you. But even a great GM, man, how many times do they miss just because that's yep. the name of the game? Yep. You know, uh, you, you sign a guy to a perfect contract and he just happens to get hurt, right? You draft a guy that you thought was absolutely perfect for you and he just personality-wise, life-wise, things happen. He didn't work out for you, right? You could be the best GM in the world and your job and the decisions that you make could be a little bit less of a percentage than, than what would be like a 50-50 coin flip. If you're a Hall of Fame quarterback, you're going to be good every Sunday, basically. Yep. Like You're going to be as good as you need to be every Sunday. The same thing can be said with the head coach. So I think the order that I would choose is head coach, yep. quarterback, yep. owner, GM. I agree. And that's it's crazy to put GM at the bottom, but so much of their job is – like baseball, if you will, mm -hmm. you're, you're, you are a part of your job is failing. Like, like that's just what it is. It's accepted. Yeah. You're, you're like, even the best GMs in the world are going to fail. Now you don't want a terrible GM and be able to fail catastrophically all the time. Obviously you can't have that, but just off the top of my head, thinking about things in that way, that would probably be my order. If you wanted to flip owner and GM to be a little bit more hands-on in your list, I could be okay with that, but that's probably what I would come up with. Yeah, I'm pretty close there. It's tough with the – I do think the right head coach can help the amend or correct the roster as much too. Like the GM – the GM is important. It's not, not to minimize the GM. But, man, the wrong the wrong owner can poison your entire organization. That's right. why the owner can't right. be last. Right, right, right. I actually – now that I'm thinking of it, I think I'm going to change it. I think I'm going to change it. Quarterback still number one for me. I well, quarterback. I had it at number two. I'm gonna move it up for number one. Okay. I'm gonna say quarterback, head coach, owner, GM. That's what I'm gonna say. Okay. That's what I'll say. I, I'll say a head coach. And Finding the head coach can bring stability to your organization, unlike anything else. That's true. Yeah. That's very true. That's very All true. Right. Great question, though. Great question. Really good. Very thought-provoking. I would love to hear in the comment section what you guys think about that one. And all these questions, of course. If you got opinions on them, if you heard something that we said and you're just like, what? Let us hear it. Let's hear it in the comments. We'd love to go back and forth with you. Jake asked this next one. What are the best live sporting event experiences that you guys have ever had? Oh, man. Ironically, one of them that comes to mind... My team didn't even win. When I went to a World Series game in 2015, the Mets oh, lost. Wow. But being at the World Series for your team is like mm. in New York is unlike anything else. Michael Conforto was a rookie and hit two home runs. It was that that is a pretty that's a pretty unmatched experience. Couple Rangers playoff games that have been awesome. Uh, I didn't go to any this year, but in the past, hmm, going to Baton Rouge is just one of the best experiences ever so, and and madison wisconsin those are the two college stops that i always consider 
up there with anything. So I went to University of Florida for anybody that does not know that. And I was there in 2012. I went there from 2012, 2013, those football seasons. Then I graduated in 2014. In 2012, that was the year that Will Muschamp had that crazy defense with Sharif Floyd and Dante Fowler and Dominique oh, yeah. Easley and John Bostic and Matt Elam. I would and, say it was Matt Josh Elam Evans. on that team? Yes, yeah. he was on that team. Oh, um, man, he was good. Luchez Purifoy and Marcus Roberson, who were good college oh, corners but weren't good NFL corners. But anyways, that At Florida? Defense, no way. <laughs> Jelani Jenkins, Larry McCray, everybody was on that team. It was such a fantastic and talented football team. LSU came to town that year, and that was Zach Mettenberger, Odell Beckham, uh, Jarvis, Jarvis Landry. Landry. Like, all those dudes were on that team. They were number three in the country at that time. I think Florida was right around 10. And that was my first year really experiencing college football. And to go to that game in the swamp – at 3.30, the primetime SEC game of the week, and to watch Florida win that game, the sights and the sounds and the atmosphere are just unmatched, man. The, yep. only other, the only other example that I have is Florida years later. I think this was 2015. Had to be 2015. Had to be 2015 because I had graduated and I went back for a game. It was a night game. Florida was playing against Ole Miss again in the swamp. Ole Miss was ranked number three again at the time. They had all those crazy receivers. Um, Laquan Treadwell was on that team too. And it's like they were supposed to be this incredible juggernaut offense. And Florida absolutely shut them down. And nighttime in the swamp, brother, it was – got to get out there. Dude, it was an experience that is just – that that level of college football, which we can sit here and we could go like, oh, Gainesville's the best, all oh, Tallahassee's, all oh, yeah, Madison, yeah, yeah. Wisconsin. When you get to that elite tier, it's just an unforgettable yep. experience every single time you go. Yep. So getting to see that, I think those two are the biggest stand out for me. And then another one that I'll give a shout-out to. I went to a high school – that had a really good basketball program. We were a really small high school, but we consistently went to the state final four and the state championships. And we had a really good player on our team one year. His name was David Magley and he was the son of the coach. And we ended up going to States that year and he was fantastic. He ends up graduating. He goes to Western Kentucky to play basketball. So all, you know, everybody who went to the school, you know, we're rooting for him. We become like, you know, like surrogate Western Kentucky fans. Yeah. Well, sure enough, they make the tournament his freshman season. And the tournament, their little uh, part of the bracket happened to be in Tampa, Florida. So a lot of us went up to Tampa, Florida, went to, uh, it wasn't Emily Arena at the time, but that arena in Tampa, and we went to go see this game. They were the 12 seed, and they were playing against Drake, which was the 5 seed. Game goes back and forth. You could tell that there were a lot of people who were there who were cheering for Drake because they just had the 5 seed winning in their bracket, right? And the game, I think Drake was up two with like 10 seconds left western kentucky inbounds the ball they do the play where the guy gets to the the top of the three-point line he goes to his right and then he basically lays it off to a guy who's many steps beyond the three-point line but he's got an open look because nobody else is out that deep he fires it up buzzer beater they score they win by one i remember going so western kentucky won and i just remember with our little group of like 20 30 people losing our minds seeing a ncaa buzzer beater for a team that we were cheering for so that's another story that i wanted to show oh being at college basketball and i'm not a big college basketball fan like this year i did first year in a while i didn't even like make a bracket but being at good college basketball games is is another thing that's pretty unmatched like i went to albany obviously and albany's basketball team was in their conference really good for a long time like they would always could they would pretty consistently make the tournament as a 15 or a 16 um seed and just because it's such a tight environment like you're so close to the court and like feel everything that it's mm -hmm. basketball is college basketball is unbelievable i was trying to think of, oh one more yes. that i've mentioned before like a sneaky great stop is tailgating in seattle for the university of washington if you <sighs> could if you could sailgate beautiful it's sailgate yeah that's the that's like the unique experience of it you <sighs> You tailgate out that's on a boat, and then you pull up to the stadium and walk right up. Sick. Yeah, it's it's. Uh, if anyone listening to this right now, you don't know what I'm talking about, just Google uh, Wa University of Washington sailgating, and you will see the Washington picture of all the boats sailgate. next to the stadium. 
I'm looking for images right now. Dude, yeah. that's awesome. It's Holy un- cow. It's unbelievable. Especially that I was is, there in October. It's truly right there. Yeah. Oh, like the captain of the boat dropped me off at the stadium. That's sick. And that's amazing. Like, dude, this is sick. Dude, yeah. okay, we gotta do that. We gotta go. We gotta, gotta do it. We gotta. We gotta go sailgating at some point because that's. Amazing. I mean, it, it's up there, quietly up there. Would love to do it. Would love to do it. Mitch asked this next one: When do you guys think time travel will be invented, and which <laughs> movie slash fictional property do you think that it will closely resemble? I don't know if time. I mean, is time travel how ever serious? He is with this question too. Oh yeah, dude. Yeah, you gotta get these are these are gonna be. Serious. I don't, is is time travel ever gonna be invented? Because if it was, wouldn't we already know? No, are you a big Interstellar guy? Yeah. Okay. I mean, like that that movie to me, it's not obviously like the best explanation of like time and compared to like. So you're saying you know, like going through black holes and shit. I'm saying like I don't think we'll ever invent time travel, but the concept of time, like bending time. Yeah. Like I don't. We'll never. We're never gonna invent. You can't invent time travel. Like I don't. It's not gonna happen. Um. That's just what I thought of, though, is like the concept mm-hmm. of time is interesting, like being in another universe and time being different because of the yeah. speed. Yeah. Yes, that, this is that a is, science I mean, podcast, the, interst- the, inter- the interstellar Physics. points, uh, the interstellar points an interesting one. Yeah, that's what I thought of right away. Like that's the only, that's like the closest like thing I right. think of. Because the, the other because the other parts of it are time. right. That's not really I don't think yeah. you believe it too much. No, I don't. It'd be pretty wild. <laughs> What if I was just like a closet, like time travel? I don't want to say like, conspiracy uh, theorist, but connoisseur. Like you really are. You know, like the I, yeah, of like the time I was travel. like I'm searching for it in my free time. Yeah. Like people go, oh, what do you do in your free time? Oh, well, I you know try to search for a way to time travel. <laughs> okay. I do think Interstellar was onto something way too early for anyone at the time to understand that the planet is just slowly being ruined. Well, and of course. I, yeah, and yeah, now yeah. everybody like lo- watches that movie years later and they're like, oh man, it was a little ahead of its time. I remember like some of the YouTube stuff I've watched, the top comments always like, this movie was onto something. Right. right. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, Unfortunately shit. so. Very sad. We laugh, but. Uh, yeah, we laugh, right. but it's, we are. it's not going to be funny for Mar- our. Mark L. asked this next one. Uh, if you and Connor played a full 11 on 11 game of football, of teams made completely of Trevor's <laughs> and Connor's, which positions would you guys be the most and least successful and who would win? So the, the problem is, I think we, with our builds, we would be. St- We'd be similar in be where similar. we would like me and yeah, Trevor are to, holding down the to, line. You used to power lift. Yeah, but not anymore. Like not not competitively anymore. Here's the the negative with that. My shoulders, I cannot throw a football. Anymore. Ooh, I got you beat then. Yeah. Like when I we, could throw a football, but I'm not throwing a football the way I did when I was like nineteen. Okay, all right. It's pretty going, bad. And we're spreading point. it out. We're going air raid. You're gonna you're yeah. still gonna you're still gonna whoop my ass in the trenches. We're bo- we're running the triple option. I'm that just is. letting everybody know that. We are absolutely running the triple option. Uh which would be an interesting Trevor's air tre- the Trevor's running the air raid versus the Connors <laughs> running the triple option is we should do something where How do we, we madden sim that? We madden sim it where our pl- creative players all have to have the same rating, but the attributes to get there can be different. And then we sim it. Mm. That'd be really funny. Wait, speaking of, I haven't done the, I haven't talked about the Madden sim yet. Yes. Oh yes. my gosh. Okay, I've got to, I've got to bring this up because I forgot about this. You guys remember when we did the uh, under twenty five draft, right? The under twenty five draft. That wasn't, that wasn't a week ago, was it? It was no, it was two weeks ago. It was two, two weeks, weeks ago. ago. Yeah. Jared Weber, who's a big, uh, big listener of the pod, sex addict, if he wants to call himself that. He's a uh, devout listener of the podcast. He put both me and Connor's rosters into Madden, the under-25 teams, and then he simulated it. So I'm going to give our producers the screenshots of the stats so you guys can see them if you're watching it on YouTube. But, buddy, I don't know how to tell you this. My team I, got I the heard. Dub. My team yeah, got I the heard. dub. My team I have some questions. got the dub out here, okay? He's, he gave all my players to the Bucks. He gave all Connor's players to the Jets. It was a close game, though. 27 to 24. It was good. Offensive yards gained, okay. Passing yards, I had 312. You had 208. Rushing Dude, yards. Doing? Dude, you had more rushing yards than me? How is that possible? Uh, well, I, all right. my question is where... I saw the picture of the box score. And curiously, Jamar Chase was not in the... Uh, receiving. It might have gotten hurt. Might yeah, gotten hurt. I, I, I would like hurt? to. I would like to know what happened in this game. 
Jonathan yep, Taylor like didn't even rush fit. for 100 yards. He only got no. 79 yards. Yeah, but DK Metcalf went off. What's it? He did go bananas. Yards. You had you had Justin Jefferson. Nobody topped the 100 yards though. Our receivers were too uh were too thin. You know what the biggest standout of this whole thing is to me? Devin White going absolutely beef on your defense. Just, you taking Devin White from me, playing against the Bucks, and him treating it like a revenge game, going absolutely wild. You guys can see it on the screen right now if you haven't. Yeah, Devin White turning into uh, you got a Ray pick, Lewis. He got a sack. He had nine solo tackles. He was an absolute king. But you know, what? Insane. you know what? But I lost. Didn't matter. Didn't matter. Tough go, matter. but I all right, what know. do we got next? Pick a theme song for the following head coaches, Bill Belichick, Brandon Staley, Robert Sala, Pete Carroll, and Dan Campbell. Uh, I only got two of them that I thought made sense to me. I thought the Belichick one, it has to be the Stone Cold Steve Austin theme song because it's been memed too many times of him yep, coming to I the tunnel in the Super yep. Bowl. And then uh, Dan Campbell is through the fire and flames from uh, Dragon Force. Oh, so for Dan Campbell, I was thinking Triple H's theme from Motorhead. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah, Dan, Dan Campbell has got a little bit of that to him. Time to play the game. That's also kind of fits him real nice. The other three are tough. Yeah, the other three. I, I could not think of the other three. So we might have to circle back to this one. Um, this one's this next one's from Jesus. Which team would make more sense for Baker Mayfield to join if he had the choice between the Tennessee Titans, the Indianapolis Colts, the Seattle Seahawks, or the New York Giants? So, like, you see the starting quarterback no matter what? Because, like, the Titans have Tannehill. The Colts have Matt Ryan. No, I think that's a factor here. It's got to uh, be Seattle, right? It would have to be Seattle because you still have Tyler Locker. You still have DK Metcalf. Yeah. You got your offensive line got better. You got Kenneth the Walker. The Giants are interesting if you think he beats out Daniel Jones. The Giants are really interesting. You're going to work with Brian Dable. Mm, if he's actually, healthy. yeah, he, my answer is the Giants. I know. I actually really like the Giants for him. I don't think the Giants like him for them but uh that that's a tough that's a tough one the giants i think i'd go with the giants well the giants have a better defense than seattle i feel like they will yes right yeah 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 yes giants they're actually going. giants would be nice for baker mayfield once they got again dexter lawrence they've got um leonard williams they have Kayvon thibodeau they've got aziz ojalari oh yeah they've got uh xavier mckinney yep. yeah they're gonna be better Mm. Not a James Bradbury anymore, which is not great, but that's a the corner thing we'll is survive. a problem in that system. We'll survive. Tough one. Seattle we'll or Giants? Colts are Colts and Titans are out. I think I'm going with the Giants here. Phil asks this next question: When you're out with family or friends at a restaurant, the waiter asks, "How uh, the checks are? Se- do you want the checks separate or together? What's the best course of action?" You always get the awkward silence from everyone once they ask the question. Were you ever a waiter, Trev? No, I was not um i kind of wish that i was though because i wish i had that life experience it's really. a, it you know what i don't regret it no it i was, know there's there's a lot of like i don't i don't want to oh. call them like little jobs but like jobs that you could have when you're in like high school or in college that like i kind of wish i had just for the almost like life knowledge of it yes so just doing landscaping in florida every summer but well yeah i would rather be doing that but um man so it, you should you should when you if you're out with a really big party you should try to brace for this because the, what Phil said is like the awkward silence from everyone looking around. And then the waiter's got to like walk away again. And then. Is it know, a major inconvenience? It depends how big your party is. Okay. If you're out like splitting a check, if you're me and you're out to dinner, right? Mm-hmm. Whatever. Just bullshitting. We, you know, we each get an entree and beer and the waiter comes and you go, do you want, could we split? Actually, you don't even need to split the check. You just put the two credit cards down. That's the yeah, easiest yeah. way to do it. Right. Because right, 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 right. when you're in the POS system as a waiter, you just put the amount half on one card and half on the other. That's it. Mm-hmm. Even splitting the check isn't really that difficult, but it's better to just give them the two credit cards. Um, now, if you got like 12 people and you all need separate checks, oh, dude, yeah. that takes forever. Yeah. Forever. And there's so, you are handling a lot of other tables. Right. Because realistically, if you're out with 12 people, it's like a day that everybody's off. Like Friday night, Saturday brunch, Sunday. So the, the chances are the restaurant's busy. I think that if it was like if it was like seven or eight people or more, I'd 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 probably just default do it on one check. But then it's also yep. like, are you with enough people that are gonna Venmo you? Is is the is the next issue, right? Yeah. So Venmo changed the game. When I was a waiter, 
I don't know if Ven- Venmo wasn't what it was mm-hmm. right now. So nobody did that. Everybody asked for sp- split checks. Now most people just go, I'll handle it. You guys Venmo me. Right, right. Which is the adult thing to do. Which is the adult thing to do, for sure. For sure. If you if you believe that they're going to Venmo you back. But also. that That's a problem, too. You know, as, as long as I know that everybody's going to, like, I would know that everybody would Venmo me back. I would, out of default, at that point, if you're if you got a huge party, be like, nah, just put it on check because my guy, credit card points. You know what it's about. You get Dude, to you get the you, rewards. Everybody, and you talk about this all the time, <laughs> right? Right. Well, Pick up a good credit card. Thirty percent of our off air conversations travel, is about credit whether card it's points. travel stuff or cash back, whatever it is, it just makes his life easier. But hundred percent. If you don't know everybody well enough to pay you back, then it gets a little dicey. It's yeah, and then bit. it opens the door. There's always that person in the party that's like, well, I didn't drink. Right. And it's like, I'm not doing the math for you to save $4. Like, well, if it's something like that, I don't give like I don't give a shit with that. I would pay for that. No question. About exactly. It. Like you said, like it's, but it's you don't the know the party. Thing. You're risking that one of the people in the party is going to make a stink about that. I I'll think... say this, though, as a former waiter, I would take splitting the checks over the mess that no offense to everybody with kids. I love your. Uh, you have no problem with your kids. They're fine. The mess that kids leave at a restaurant is waiter fear number one dude besides not getting tipped which doesn't need to be said crayons right. tip food people. you spilled you absolutely drinks are. the floor engrossed with stuff yeah oh my god I, you know what a lot of people will tell you this they work in the food service you get like food you get uh waiter nightmares or dreams for like mm-hmm. years after <laughs> years seriously i had one like a couple months ago for the first time in five years and when i woke up i was like holy shit it's been a long time since I had one of those. All right. Uh, just a handful more before we're going to wrap it up here. Uh, Johnny asked this one. Who's your favorite NFL player of your lifetime that did not play for Good your one. favorite team? I actually wrote down some names for every sport just because I was I was in the mood after this question. Yep. But who is your guy? Um, so for football, when I was really young, it was Brett Favre on the okay. Packers, which was pretty easy because, like, you know, obviously the Jets wow, and the and Packers then he became no a jet. rivalry there. And he did become a Jet. But I was also a big Chad Pennington guy. So when he became mm-hmm. a Jet, I was like, I'm not mad about this, but there is some big conflict here. Mm-hmm. And then Pennington went to the Dolphins, and they won a division. There's a lot of problems there. Baseball, uh, Ken Griffey Jr., very chalky yep. answer, but like Ken Griffey Jr. was... It has to be. No, I mean, I mean, it has to be. He was the man. Basketball, Allen Iverson. Um, now, these are all answers of teams that I don't root for, right? Like, yeah, I, can give yeah, you, yeah. I can give you Jets, Mets, Knicks, right, right, uh, Rangers. Right. Hockey... Hockey's a little more tough. Like, I don't, once again, I don't, like, when I was, especially when I was young, I didn't watch a lot of hockey besides the Rangers. So I didn't really, like, love a player. It's Joe Sackick or Patrick Waugh for me. Okay. I was, I, now I know that we had a we had a commenter who I think was a uh, Detroit Red Wings fan in our in our last video when we were just talking about hockey and stuff. So this is gonna this is gonna this is gonna hurt them and I'm I'm sorry, but I was on the Avs side of the Red Wings Avalanche mm. rivalry because I loved yep. Joe Sackick and Patrick Waugh, Peter Forsberg, it was a cool team. Duke, they were a cool team. all those dudes. So yeah. I mean there were so many really great players for the for the Red Wings as well. But um that would be mine. That would be mine for for hockey. For baseball it's Ken Griffey Jr. for sure. Football Champ Bailey was actually my wow. favorite player that did not play for the Bucks. I just love Champ Bailey, man. I love the defensive back in the cornerback position. Brian Dawkins is also a huge one for me. Absolutely loved B Doc, but you know, he played a little bit into uh, the two thousands, so I didn't know how far we were going into that. Yeah. Basketball, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna be honest, man, Allen Iverson's a great call. I think Steph Curry. I think Steph wow. Curry's my favorite. If you ask me who my favorite basketball player of all time was, I'd tell you it's Tracy McGrady because I grew up in Florida, Orlando Magic. Tracy McGrady was absolutely awesome. I had his jersey. I had his shoes. I had all this stuff for T-Mac. But I truly love watching Steph play. The best of Steph is the most fun time I have watching basketball. And I'm not a huge basketball dude. I'm not a huge NBA dude. I'll watch it. But I think Steph is just so incredibly entertaining and how he's changed the game and – I think he would be my favorite. I really do. I think he'd be my favorite. It's a great answer because with Steph, when he came into the league, I mean, he was so much lighter than he even is now. That There was something with Steph that, like, don't get me wrong, not anybody could be Steph Curry. But there was this thought of Steph that when you watched him play, he, he was so different than everyone else because of his size yep. and the fact that he was a different generation of shooter 
that it's I don't know. You're right. It's he's somebody that I don't know if I want to say change the game. Oh, dude, brother, he changed but the game completely. Really changed completely. the direction of the NBA. And he did. Yes. Yeah. 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 That's that's a that's definitely a modern one. I definitely went back in time with these. Oh, if I AI went today, is awesome though. Right. Yeah. If I went, you know, obviously, I would say Marshall Falk was another football one. Him oh, and, him yeah. and Favre were the two non-Jets that I like really, really liked watching play makes sense that makes sense handful more tyler said all right boys if you're running behind the best of offensive line in football in either a shanahan or mcveigh system how many rushing yards could you get in the game i'm going with 17 it's funny i was gonna say 15 to 18 i'm going seven going and i i feel like i'm and not a yard more probably yards less no and i'm thinking i'm like the the workhorse back like right. i'm averaging more carries, carries than yards <laughs> yeah yeah i'm averaging way more carries than yards i want to make that clear i have the best offensive line in the league i have one of the best offensive coaches in the league like the yards i'm getting are there like i'm getting one yard past line of scrimmage and i'm getting now i don't think i survive for more than three carries no of course yeah yeah I'm getting beat so to, getting beat the shit that's the real answer to this question is that i'd probably get one yard all right yeah. andrew asked this one we had to get this one in he says, fair warning, this is a heated topic in the sex addicts group chat. Very serious. So you will be judged accordingly. What would you call these cookies? Are icing they like, cookies? Like sugar cookies, but with, with like icing? The icing on top and the sprinkles? Yeah. Let's let's Google what comes up with icing cookies. Yeah, kind of. The like But they're they're like the ones that you get in like the tin frosted, from like a from frosted. like a frosted frosted cookies yeah it's they like have to be in a tin with... they're frosted sugar cookies okay are freshness they, guaranteed are they good yes or no yes but they're a garbage cookie like let me ex it's like you you know when you eat something that you're like i know this is really crappy but like i still enjoy it mm -hmm. they're that like would they be the first choice of cookie or even second or third no but they're not bad they're not bad. It's a garbage cookie, but they're not bad. I'll be honest with you. They're pretty good. Maybe it's just because they're just mounds of sugar. What do you got for us here? Trash. Yeah. <laughs> I think they're trash. I think they're it's a garbage gar cookie, listen, but they're good. Listen, listen. It's empty calories. It's empty sugar. Sh it's garbage sure. carbs. It's garbage sugar. 100%. Sugar. Get that still tasty. out of here. I'm not, still no, tasty. look. Oh, look, yeah. look it, is, it is physically a cookie so it cannot necessarily taste bad but on yeah. the spectrum of cookies it's trash these things stink want better for yourself people go out and get go out and get a good pie a good cake or hell i don't know a better freaking cookie don't do this don't you look we only have a finite amount of meals and times that we get hungry in this life that number may be large but it is finite do not sell yourself short on the snacks or the meals that He's you furious. have expect better from yourself get better cookies for goodness sake they're not a top I'm not, I'm not in this group chat so i i can't wait to no. never get invited because of this cookie no no there's people that agree <laughs> with you that's the, that's why it's con, it's conflicting it's it's a split opinion it's definitely not a top dessert it's definitely not a top cookie but you cannot deny that they still taste kind of good all right two more uh tyler asked what quarterback that played pre-2000 would you most want to see in today's game elway i mean elway would be pat Mahomes. oh mine's i say Marino. this all the time mine's wow Marino. okay yeah so Marino would be like Burrow, right? Right, but I just I feel like Marino would go nuts in would this pass happy bonkers. League. Yeah, you're right. So, man, those would, be, those would be our two. Yeah, I think that's pretty clear cut. If you had a one one in a fresh dynasty draft, who do you take with the first overall pick? Should we say it's not super flex? Because that kind of ruins. Yes, it. if it's no, super yeah, flex, yeah, you're right. saying a quarterback. Right, you're gonna say a quarterback. Yeah, you're so gonna say like, one quarterback. quarterback. Yes, it's one quarterback. And I'm, I'm taking, say, I'm taking I'm gonna, Jamar Chase. And I'm going to say it's at least uh, half a point PPR because we're not yep. animals, right? Like nobody's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, animals. not standard. Like you're living in the 90s, writing it down on right. with pencil. Sick. Sick. So, you, okay, you're going with Jamar Chase? Yeah, I'd go with Jamar Chase. Because the thing about Justin Jefferson. That's probably the right call, but I want to say Justin Jefferson. Is the quarterback situation. Right, I know. After Cousins. I know, I know. Burrow's not going anywhere. No, and he's a stud. Yeah. And and Jamar even has, like, help around him. Like, you can't just sell out on Jamar. Yeah. Because then T. Higgins is going to go off. Yeah. 
Damn. And I'm not, I'm not taking a running back 1-1 one, one in a fresh dynasty. No, Jonathan Taylor is about as good as it gets. So, like, if you yep. wanted to argue him, be like, okay, but I'm going to go with one of the receivers. Last question. Uh, Andrew asked this one. What's, what's each of your guilty pleasure movies? A movie that you've seen, a movie that is seen as universally awful, but you love it. Do you have one? I have one that, like, I don't watch it a lot, but I do enjoy it, and it's a terrible movie. Okay. Uh, P- Pain and Gain with Mark Wahlberg and The Rock. Uh... <laughs> terrible movie. <laughs> terrible. But I love it. I absolutely love it. Oh, it's so bad. But it's I've so good. It hits every stereotype of lifting. One time. Yeah, I think I've seen it like two or three times. I've only seen it. it one time. But the part where he's like stressing out and he's like, I gotta get a pump. And he just, and starts, he doing just curls. Like starts doing bicep curls. And, and The then... Rock is narrating it. It's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. It's such a good, bad movie. I don't it's know. terrible. I don't I don't watch a ton of movies. And so like I don't watch a lot Same. of I don't know if I watch a lot of like movies that are bad. This isn't um, like ever going to really be like a movie podcast because you and I are not. You know, I haven't, well, I haven't been to the movie since before the pandemic. Okay, you're crazy. All right, you're nuts. Everything's you're, you're available nuts. on streaming. Like no, instantly. Just, no, Connor, go, get, no. just go to, go to the movies, Bigger man. problem is, too, our movie Live theater in, in Hoboken closed. So it's oh, like I'm okay. not going well, far right. for a movie. Um, are the Godzillas considered bad? Yes. Are like the No, no, like the new ones? Like the, Are the new ones considered bad? Well, let's just go by the easiest way to find out. What is Rotten Tomatoes? Thing? Okay, yeah, yeah. Because or Metacritic. For whatever reason. Oh boy. <laughs> what is it? What is it? Wait, if, which there's so many that I need to make sure I find the right. The newest one. ones. Okay, is... no, the one in '98 got slaughtered. <laughs> Unlike anything I've ever seen. Are we talking about uh, like Brian Cranston? Is that 2014? Or are we even talking newer? We're talking 2019. Uh, I th- there was. Oh one yeah, you're that- talking. You're talking the one no, that came yeah, out in yeah, 2019. Brian, no, no, the Brian Cranston one too. Okay, so the one, the Brian Cranston one got the is 76 percent approval, which is like not terrible. Okay, that good. That's too good to be a bad movie. Okay, okay, okay. 2019, 42 percent. Okay, I will turn that one on when it's on TV, so I'll watch that one consistently. And then disaster. I, and then look, I've I've watched Thor: The Dark World like six times, man. <laughs> I'm going to be honest, like, if it's on TV, I'm probably <laughs> going to throw it on. I'm never going to seek this movie out. but It like, finds you, though. Right. Like, if it's on TV, I'll be Six like, times. all right, I guess, you know, like, it's a, it's a Marvel movie, so. That's fair. Wait, wait, and wait, that's your thing. What did, what did Thor The Dark World get? Let's see. You got to tell me before we get out of here. Okay. Uh... Rotten Tomatoes one well, IMDb got six point eight, which qualif and sixty per sixty six percent on Rotten Tomatoes. So it's bad. It's not a good movie. Okay, all right, but it's, it's a superhero a, movie, so I think they went easy on it. But man, there's some red. That's a great question because there's a lot of bad movies that people just enjoy. I Understand? Think, and I won't knock them for it. Now, if I think of another one, I gotta, I gotta. I know. It. I'm like kind of scrambling my brain right now and thinking, thinking what are of bad, some good, some good movies. What like some... like a lot of the bad movies that I've seen, I genuinely like think are bad, you know. Oh yeah, and you oh, just don't watch them again. Okay, you know, you know what actually takes the cake for me? I've seen Suicide Squad like three times, so I, I've never even seen it. It's it is because I heard it was that bad. Known as just one of the worst yep. films, and you know what, buddy? It's bad. It objectively as a film, it is bad. But when Suicide Squad's on TV, I'll be like. All right. Yeah. Why not? Okay. Fine. And yeah. I'll throw this, it on. this tanked. Twenty six percent on Rotten Tomatoes. It's bad, man. It's bad. But I, I've, I've probably seen that movie like two or three times. I remember when the trailer dropped. I was like, "That's gonna be sick." And, and it then was like it got absolutely slaughtered. Not. It's so terrible. badly that I didn't even. <laughs> I didn't even give it a chance. I didn't even go. I didn't even watch it. It's a bad movie. It's a bad movie. You know, it wasn't bad. Was this episode? This was awesome. This was it fantastic, was guys. Thank you for all your questions. We didn't even get to all the questions. No, you, guys we, sent, you guys sent in so many. We got to as many as you possibly could. Went a little bit over an hour. Uh, hopefully, you guys enjoyed it. It was a little bit of a switch up uh, for this Monday episode. If you guys like this kind of a thing, we'd love to do more of it because it's a lot of fun for us. Hopefully, it's a lot of fun for you guys as well. Comment, tweet at us. Let us know if this is something that you want to consistently do, whether it's a full episode thing or uh, if we want to kind of make sure that we're sticking it in at the back of an episode each week, maybe getting three or four questions in there. One way or the another, we'd love to do it but we'd love to hear from you guys also if you have any takes on our takes right anything that we said here on the show we would love to hear from you there away. uh as well make sure you hit us up in the comments section but uh connor we survived we survived the first mailbag monday 
uh hopefully the sex addicts don't uh <laughs> don't disgrace us too or don't uh don't disown us too much no it was awesome uh and like you said let us know because we're trying to figure out our plan for the season especially when we're back to three shows a week so yeah, yeah. you know we we want the interaction with you guys to always be a consistent like weekly not like once a month once every two months kind of thing so let us know how much you like it what what kind of questions you like um once again it's june so the this is going to be the least amount of football that you hear in our shows it's just the reality right, Unless you want right. to you want to hear trevor and i talk about content aggregation of otas um this is not the podcast for you <laughs> so, not, yet, not yet at least <laughs> not, not yet not we might, yet we might get into some training camp takes but we gotta yeah, wait a little no, bit to training get to, camp is, training is camp. we're on that we're gonna be on preseason college football stuff nfo yes, draft we're doing scouting right. every thursday right right now we're just having a little fun no we're just uh we're just having a little fun well um if there's a game seven for lightning rangers oh, go man. bolts if the lightning yeah. already won the series series go then bolts. i'm not just happy right now this and is if the rangers of me, it's not exist. won the series then go I'm, bolts thanks and I'm, I'm hammered somewhere hey so, yeah. you know when this pod comes out we're going to get italian food after after actually the, the day well, literally out, what so we're so. doing is people are listening to this that's that's very that's very true so uh hope you guys enjoyed the podcast guys thanks for listening we will see you on thursday we're picking back up summer scouting with some yes. wide receiver talk we'll see you guys then